Hello fellow 8-Bit Heroes, uh, this is Jacob, um, we're trying something different today, we're actually doing a YouTube video, and I'm joined today by uh, King Scorpio uh, 39 and um, we're going to be talking about the Legend of Korra season finale. James, what's going on, man? How's it going, man? How's it hanging? About this this Legend of Korra season finale, man, uh, what say you about it? Oh boy, well, I mean, for the most part, I enjoyed it, um, a lot of great action involved, um, Studio Mirror just continues just to like wow me at every turn. Didn't quite wrap it off as nice as it could have, but you know, still nice. I enjoyed it. Well, I mean, I don't know, man. I have so many mixed feelings about it. I mean, I wasn't really, this wasn't my favorite season. Uh, season four just wasn't. Uh, there were a oh, lot of I things. Yeah, there's a lot of things that were going on. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way, especially because I watched it all at once instead of like episode by episode. So I was literally able to see like a bunch of cracks as they were happening. So wow. yeah, I wasn't really too wowed by it, especially those final two minutes. But we're going to well, get into that. You want to talk, you want, you want to talk about that now? You want to talk about it later? Let's build up to that, man. We, we're going to build up to it. Okay. Well, I mean, as a season, um, as you know, I write, I review. I write my own reviews, and um, I watched it week for week, um, and I watched each episode two or three times as a season. It's a giant mixed bag for me. A lot of good moments, a lot of things that had me kind of go like, what? <laughs> or where did that come from? A lot of um, derailing on the character development they did, but still, overall, mixed bag. It's probably my second least favorite season behind season two. But, um, yeah, I mean, still, still decent up to the last two minutes, which we'll get into. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. As far as the season goes, I felt like, I felt like all, a lot of the characters were severely underused. I felt like Team Avatar especially was severely underused. What Team Avatar? <laughs> well, everybody doing their own thing, team. You know what I mean? Because that's what they was doing. I felt like, I feel like Bolin just was everywhere. He ain't learned nothing. He, you know, he, he'd already, you know, teamed up with a bad guy before, uh, you know, with Varric. And, you know, then he gonna do it again with, uh, you know, uh, with old girl. If in doubt, look at Bolin's friend to the, to see who the villains are. Pretty much. And Kavira, man, she was just like the biggest underachieving villain of all time. Whoa, what's your problem with Kavira? Everybody had grand goals. Like, everybody was doing something big. Amon, I will make benders and non-benders equal by taking away bending. You know, uh, Unalak, you know, I will bring the spirits back into the physical world. You know, Zaire, I will literally destroy national borders and, uh, and monarchies and systems of government in favor of anarchy. Kavira. I'm trying to unite the f the uh, Earth Kingdom. Yeah. Let her be great. She's over there trying to be Ozai 2.0. She was not great. She was not great at all. <laughs> she was the great uniter. <laughs> she was she was the great scrub who got lucky. <laughs> she was a scrub by comparison. Yeah, she was a scrub by comparison, but she was still pretty. I like. I enjoyed her. I thought she brought a lot to the table that a lot of previous villains didn't do for Korra. Look, man, I felt like they were trying to pull the biggest girl power love fest out of their asses that they could possibly have done with this season. Oh, they didn't try to do that. They did that. Dude, it's bad when every single story beat literally revolves around female characters so intentionally and so obviously like that somebody needs to teach these writers about subtlety like oh my god like they literally gave the male characters nothing to do from Tenzin to Mako to Varric to to Bolin nobody really had very much to do and very much to say they even slept on my man Kai who was a boss in the uh in the second half of the third season he didn't he got saved by Opal are you kidding me where was Kai? I got, I swear Kai was like lineless after like the second episode. Yeah, that's pretty much how it went down. And it just like, 
completely just toned everybody down, destroyed all character development that had been built up, you know, from the uh, from the past three seasons. You know, they they butched up Korra. I mean, oh my god, like her character. If you like put her character model from season three next to her character model from season four together, it's like not only is it the hair, but they they define the muscles more. You know, they they really go out of their way to like really like take away any type of feminine qualities away from Cora's build. Well, I mean, they did a lot to kind of derail Cora this yeah. season, and physically, well, that was just sad. It was the tip of the iceberg. Wasn't it though? Wasn't it? Yeah. <sighs> man, I don't know, yeah. man. I mean, and let's not even get on the freaking. Iron Giant slash War of the Worlds crazy arm Dungeon cannon slash mecha. Iron Giant slash, um, well, I don't know. World Breaker, um, Kamehameha. <laughs> Girl, Latin type deal. Yeah. Let's not, even, let's not even get into how long that mecha fight was. With all platinum combined. That's how you knew that, uh, that Kavira was a scrub. Because they had to literally create an entire plot device surrounding her final battle because, you know, she was definitely the most underwhelming villain in the series. It could have been worse, man. She could have merged with the spirit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. You leave Unalak alone. They created a whole different name for him and he was still a scrub. Still a scrub. Unavatu. Oh, man. Anyway, focus. Um, I enjoyed them dealing with the with the fake Gundam. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed it was it was a nice change of pace and it was something that hadn't been done before. It definitely upped the ante in terms of scale, in terms of the battlefield and what was going on. So it was different. I enjoyed it. It was definitely drawn out. Um, shout out to um the mosquito, the squash mosquito, Hiroshi um Sato. Oh my for, god. Um, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was different. I wish they got out of it a lot sooner. I thought that Cora and Kovir was going to battle in the city for the finale. I didn't think they were going to battle in the control room. I thought that was a little played out. Reminded me of the Green Ranger and the Power Rangers from back in the day. We doing the power in, 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 the, in the cockpit. Screw off, screw off, that type of feeling. <laughs> I could have done without that. I saw it once. I hear you, man. I don't know, man. It, it just, like I say, it just lasted so long. But, um, let's get to it, man. So, oh boy. so after everything wraps up and, you know, the, the least, you know, exciting fight that has ever taken place in a season finale of Avatar wrapped up, then we get this weird, awkward type of conversation between Asami and Korra, in which they're talking about going on vacation, but they don't look like they're trying to go on vacation. They look like they're going on a honeymoon, and I felt like that was probably the laziest piece of storytelling I have ever seen, ever. I mean, come on, guys. You literally fell into the trap. You did the biggest egregious sin ever, and that's fabricate a relationship just to please the fans. It was... It was egregious, man. I mean, the fact that, you know, that this relationship had no real buildup outside of some brief innuendo at the end of uh, season three and a little bit at the beginning of season four. Other than that, Korra and, and Asami barely really talk to each other, and yet we're supposed to believe that this relationship is real? Um, first of all, I'll, let me start by saying um, the shippers out there get on my nerves. Not just for this series, but just TV shows in general. Oh my god, you two looked at each other in the same room. You must be shit together. Y'all, get on my nerves. Alright, so, um, yeah. That whole relationship, you know, Jacob, you know me for a while. You know I write, and that kind of deal. Um, I usually suspend belief and kind of take myself out of it, take logic out of it when I take in another person's writing or art form and just try to see what they're trying to do and I didn't see it. Um, I didn't see anything, anything romantic. Um, I saw a deep friendship. I saw two people who were like, hey, 
um, it's that girl who's not. And seeing like, hey, this chick is not so bad. And um, obviously, um, they're only together solo two or three times in the entire um, 13 episodes of season four. Uh, aside from a letters and an unwarranted argument, there was no real much of anything. Yeah. And it just seemed forced. Oh, yeah. And then... The fact that they didn't want to commit to it. It was like, if y'all are going to make them lesbians, which is fine, by the way. I mean, most of the people that watch Korra watch anime, myself and yourself included. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's not really like a you know lesbian relationship is that big a deal. It's 2014. But, you know, it was just like they refused to actually commit to it. And then on top of that, and on top of it being unearned, like they literally just, like the cynical side of me wants to say, y'all literally just made Korra the most marginalized minority box ever like y'all had to tick every minority box oh is she a girl check is she a minority check is she a lesbian check it's like really y'all had to hit like the last box just to make her all the freaking minorities that ruins the whole thing for me is because you're trying to force this down our throat that came out of nowhere like you said no problem with it but if you're gonna do it do it right don't cram it down our throat last second Definitely. And it just, and it is, as you said, it marginalizes the character. And that's the best thing about the show, was Corn and her development. Yeah. Which is out the window. Yeah. It's like, and it was just such a big cliche. Let's make her more butch. Let's, let's have her symbolically cut her hair to symbolize some, you know, uh, some lifestyle change that she's going to make later on in the series. Let's make this weird, rape allegory with the uh with the ending of season three you know where it's supposed to be to say that. yeah i was going to say that yeah it was like basically you zaire roofied her me. and then took advantage you hurt me you changed me i can't be myself anymore because of you yeah now i need to face down my attacker it's like god dang it guys this is i know a lot of adults watch but this is a kid's show can we not do this again i mean we've got we've had both of these cliches already this year we had the sisterhood, we don't need a man to get true love's kiss from Frozen. And then we had the whole rape allegory with Maleficent. Like, this was unnecessary. And I felt like it was just, it was more so of a F you to Nickelodeon than it was, you know, uh, a well thought out ending to a great series. And then just a, a shout out to the shipper for yeah. no, for no real reason. Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like it's a disservice as a writer to pander to that kind of crowd. I mean, do you. You're trying to tell us a story. Don't change what you're doing for us. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to absorb what you're putting out. Yeah. Like we're here to absorb your thought process, what you're putting on uh, on paper or on a TV screen or whatever medium you're, you're coming to us for. Oh, yeah. Do you. Oh, you yeah. will appreciate that. Yeah, and it's like, dude. And the fact that they didn't, so did. Yeah, I was like, dude, we're in season four. The fans are already here. We ain't going nowhere. So yeah. what was the point of this? I mean, they've been here for nine years. <laughs> exactly. So, man, I mean, with all that said, like, what what would you give it out of five, man? Um, The finale, um, before those last two minutes, <laughs> um, 4.2. Um, I appreciate the scale. I appreciate um, them going out of their way to do things they ain't never done before. Um, they didn't pull the trigger on a lot of things that an anime would, but of course it's an anime. Um, so it kind of like, eh, a little bit. I feel like some characters should have bit the bullet. Mako. Mako should have bit the bullet for sure. Um, I feel like Cora should have bit the bullet too, but whatever. Um, yeah, so... 4.2 before, afterwards, 3.0. I agree with that, 3.0, especially with every, with all things considered. All right, guys, well, this is our first foray into the YouTube, uh, you know, community, so uh, we'll, hopefully we'll be back if the response is positive. So um, in the meantime, guys, uh, we'll see you next episode. Shout out to Film of All Black. Subscribe below. Peace.